91X, Marty and Danielle from the morning radio show here in San Diego on with a rock and roll hall of famer, Stone Gossard. You know him from the guitar in, well, one of the guitars, right? In yeah. Pearl Jam, and also his new project with Mason Jennings called Painted Shield. Hey Stone, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's hard to believe I'm in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, really, if you think about it. <laughs> right? I still can't wrap my head around that one. Do they give you a holiday card once a year? Do you get? Is there some sort of annual uh, hello or recognition or some sort of... Uh, no, I get to vote, uh, so that's cool. So they send me a ballot every year now and saying, you know, who, what, what's, what's happening. Mm -hmm. so, so I voted for uh, Soundgarden this year, and um, I think Mark Bolin was this year too, and mm -hmm. a few others, but... Soundgarden didn't make it, but they'll they'll make it at some point. Um, not on the ballot. Who should be on this next ballot? Uh, Jeff Amon always says X, and I I tend to agree with him. I think they're a, truly an American rock and roll original band. Um, Kiss made it in finally, right? So they're in. They were snub. They were snubbed for a long time. But you got to go. Come on, Kiss. Yeah. They got to. How could you not have Kiss in there? It's like you know. Um, as much as it pains me, because Gene is so irritating, but <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's, I mean, unbelievable, you know, yeah. classic. So, it's an, um, yeah, yeah, everyone, I mean, I, I think it's, you know, at this point, they're running out of people to put in. I think once we were in, and it's like now, it's like, okay, well, we got to get, what, what's next year? And it's like, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's an interesting take. I mean, the amount of new rock bands, are there? the caliber of artists that can get in there. I mean, it's changing a little bit. You see hip hop come in, you see jazz artists get in at this time or another, you know, I, I, I think what, you know, I think there's plenty of room for bands to be impactful. I just think it's harder to kind of have the big impact in the same way that bands had in the past, mainly because of like how diffused everything is. And like, there's just so many channels to, you know, to kind of spread out across so many channels and get that sort of attention. But something's coming down the pike there's somebody that's going to make a put a rock band together and everyone's going to go oh thank god that's back you know or um right. but I, I mean i love hip-hop i love pop music i love it i love it all so i'm not I, i'm not afraid of uh other types of music getting in there as long as it's you know if it's had an impact and it's really compelling and people really care about it i think it's for oh and i think over a period of time it's got to sustain for a while you know yeah we had a little uh, conversation with a friend of yours, Dave Grohl, and we asked him who is on the precipice of being part of a revolution, a revolution that you were a part of way back. Um, he said, Billie Eilish. Is there somebody you see that is uh I mean, yeah. I mean, you think about her, her, her career and how she's kind of doing things from a business perspective and from a do it yourself, uh, you know, the sort of her making music with her brother and in, in a very unique sort of way, I think she's totally on her way to to yeah. that but um I, I love bands so you know i, I think bands are harder because it's like band you really have to kind of commit to a band it's like you can't like you can have different levels of talent in your band but if you don't like go okay come on this is it we got to keep doing it. even if you know even if gossard you're not really pulling your weight the last five years you're still in and i know you're <laughs> gonna pull your weight again at some point so it's not like football, you know, we all would have been fired long ago or had to retire, but rock, you can kind of, you know, you can get away with it for a while and be yeah. a slacker. <laughs> uh, you found some new people to play with, not who we know you to be uh, your usuals, Mason Jennings and Brittany Davis and Matt's an old friend, but talk about how, yeah, uh, reaching creativity with new people can you talk yeah about well i'm i mean i write a lot of songs so i've i've got demos you know i've got dropbox with you know uh, demos for years you know so uh sometimes it's fun to finish songs and uh, our uh a good friend of mine dan field who at the time was managing mason um and this is six almost seven years ago said you should write a song with mason he's he's looking to collaborate and do something he's a singer songwriter and does a lot of stuff on his own and i didn't know mason's music at that time and i just said you know, I, I, almost everything that's happened to me in terms of successes and things like that has been random connections with people. It's not because uh, uh, I was on a, you know, a music search or sort of scouring the planet for the greatest musicians or, you know, 
it's just kind of friends and random connections and you just kind of find something and you work at it for a while. And, and um, this is a, a collaboration that Mason and I started. We wrote Knife Fight right off the bat. I sent him the music to that, um, which had me and actually Josh Freeze plays drums on that track. Amazing. Uh, California drummer extraordinaire. And, um, and uh, we, um, we knocked that one out of the park. It was like, okay, this is great. You know, we can do more like this. And then we, you know, we wrote some more songs together and they weren't all great. They were, some needed to be worked on. So we, we did a single back then and maybe we worked on it a little bit more. And then we took, I did, probably didn't talk to him for a year. And then we just kind of started talking about some more songs and I sent him some more and there was no plan or strategy. It was just like, you know, every once in a while we just talk about collaborating and then in the last year and a half, we really kind of hit a few out of the park again. Uh, On the Level was another song that we wrote and it happened really quickly. And and Mike and Jeff played on that one and that was really exciting. And um, uh, so, and then sort of the pandemic hit and then there was a lot of time to kind of go, okay, let's get it all across the finish line. And uh, and we did. Matt Chamberlain is, you know, he played with Pearl Jam. He's played with freaking everyone. He's one of the greatest drummers in the history of the, you know, the yeah. position and, uh, you know, he played with Soundgarden for 50 dates. I mean, he, he can, I mean, he can do it all. Um, and he started writing some songs for it. So he wrote, um, in your, um, I am your country, uh, the music for that. And so really been probing him and getting him to write some songs. And then Brittany Davis, who's, uh, who I'm making a record with right now in Seattle, who's a great singer songwriter. She's such a good piano player and singer. I was like, well, maybe you want to play on a couple songs. And then she's like, yeah, I'm in. And then we were like, okay, well, you can be in the band too. You can have your solo career and then you can be in the band too. And so there's all kinds of good stuff going on. And uh, this, this group of the group of players, you know, the four of us in particular, uh, we all come from really different places and it's a really nice blend happening. Also yeah. the guy, you know, the guy that really impacted the record is the mixer, John Congleton, who's, he mixes a lot of big um, records right now. A lot of indie stuff that's really cool. And uh, he came in and really did some great work on the record, really contoured it, played on it, uh, pulled stuff out, stripped stuff down, you know, reimagined some things. Um, so he played a huge role. We really encouraged him to like be aggressive with, with his mix. You say he mixed it. Is that sort of an executive producer position or is that your title or is that, is that just uh, somebody who, who looks at it at the end and goes, okay. Or does he come in and go, Hmm, this a mixer. No, a mixer has a big impact. So you record everything and you got your, you know, you have your, your, you know, your rough mixes, which is like, you know, and, and it sounds good. It sounds like the song. It's basically all the parts, but it's a, there's a lot, there's too much stuff there. You've got five guitar tracks and then someone came in and put a horn on it. You didn't know about, and then there's like violins and, you know, and so at some point you have too much stuff. And then the mixer really takes all those individual sounds and either pull stuff out, balances, turns something up that you didn't even know was there, turns the drums off, turns the drums back on here makes this reverb on the vocal so it sounds like he's in a big space or very close, like sounds like he's right there. So he makes a lot of aesthetic decisions about the actual, what you finally hear. It's the same song, but it's, it's, it really, he can make it three dimensional. So it, the difference between something being a crappy demo that you hear that you go, the crappy demo, and then something that sounds like Led Zeppelin, you're like, okay, that's a mix and a sonic, expertise and that's and that's what he did you know comes in at the end and, and tweaks everything similarly on that track <clears throat> as a songwriter and being part of different projects how do you decide which song is going to go with which project or which band uh you know the you know for pearl you know i i write everything in my in my heart i'm writing everything for eddie i mean i just like he's he's my singer and i like you know um but i write way too much stuff i'm writing stuff and i i'll he, he doesn't want me to send him 30 songs. He's like, please don't send me 30 songs. <laughs> you know, Ed likes to work in the moment and he likes the band to kind of come in and do some, get something together. And then he wants to be able to react to that in the moment. And, and it's, he, he, his, the, the way he works is different than me. So I can, I can be very, uh, I, I guess I, I, I just have a lot of stuff. And again, it's, it's very random. Like I'll just wake up one morning. I'll think, I'll scroll back through some old demos and I go, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. I'll send that to Mason and see what he thinks. And, and that, and then, so it's in the same sense and, and it's, it's, it's kind of random and, and 
but right now we're actually we're actually painted shields making some new music that's you know more matt chamberlain driven he's writing some more mason's writing some more so we're kind of it's already evolving past where we were at on this record at this point so it's fun it's fun just to be in this in this process i love writing songs i love uh I love just kind of collaborating in the and the process of it. You know, I'm I get done with records and I don't really listen to them that much. I, I make the record and I kind of just I don't know. I'm sort of off to the next the next thing. That's just you know that's how my mind works. Do you ever get a chance to turn off? Do you ever put it down? Do you, I feel like a guy like you, you you don't stop thinking about? No, I, I have a lot of time to t turn off because I have four kids. So like my my life is in one hour increments. So I like you know. <laughs> I don't get to play as much as I want to right now. I don't get to listen as much. And there's, you know, doing a label and this band is taking up some bandwidth. So I've like got to, you know, get a, you know, make a couple phone calls or do this and that. But then there's so many dishes to do. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. And uh, I love it. I love being a stay at home mom. Um, and we both, my, my wife and I are both sort of stay at home moms, but it, it comes naturally to me. You ever seen that one ad where the woman's looking at her husband and slowly over time he's he's turning into his own mother? Like it's one of the, it's like that's <laughs> I really feel like that is kind of me. Like if you like you're wow, you're just like a bitchy mom at home. <laughs> that's amazing. Pick up your crap. <laughs> Dog poop is the uh, chore of the day at my house. Yeah. Man. Of it. <laughs> if you're walking around with a bag of dog poop, nobody's going to talk to you. I'm telling you, just like, it's like, you could be walking a dog and just like, Rockstar tips. I was, you know what? Oh, I got to talk to you about <laughs> Nobody wants to say hello. Uh, sounds like you got a super group at the home there. What do you yeah. think the term super group? Does that cross your mind? Are you a super group with super grouping? Uh, you know, I feel like that's a tenacious D thing where he's like, you're super grouping. You're, I, what are you, you're up to something. It's like you're trying to bring it's I think it all relates to like the wonder, like uh, Superman uh, Hall of Justice kind of like you're trying to like get. OK, well, I need one guy that, you know, kiss kind of summed it up. Right. It's like you got to get one guy from each or a girl from each corner of the planet and bring them together. So it's all kind of super groupy, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to. I'm going to play a psychologist real quick. I'm going to hold okay. up some pictures and, and maybe you can give me the first thing that comes, comes to your mind. It, okay. Nothing graphic. All right. Stone gossip. Uh, All right. Okay. I can't see you got all oh, the Paul McCartney. Is that who that is? Yeah. Oh no. Yes. Paul McCartney. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. He's the greatest bass player of all times. Okay. Yep. And songwriter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is there a favorite in that group for you? No. no, I mean, I every time I'll switch around at different times, but it's it's the it's the sound of their records and the songs. It's like they're just ridiculous. They just keep getting better and better. So there's not not enough can be said about the Beatles. Let me let me show you this one here. Oh yeah, Matt Dillon, uh, Citizen Dick, right? Yeah, incredible. Really, really funny guy. Really funny guy. Um, and that wig was just like why. I could not believe that wig on him because it was. <laughs> um, Do you, get touch? You, ever, you ever see him around or anything? Like no, that? I haven't seen him in, in in a long time. But you know, he was he was a great guy. We had a we had a nice hang, and he was like. He was he was a great guy, enthusiastic, really like funny, and. Uh, um, but I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in a long time. Mookie Blaylock. Oh, Mookie Blaylock. Yeah. Um, I, we, you know, that we wanted to keep the name. I mean, it was a great name. I mean, we, because we had been Mookie Blaylock for a year. And at the time, it was like, Mookie Blaylock sounds great. It's like, you know. Yeah. And then we asked Mookie, and he was like, mm, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling it. And we were like, oh, that makes sense. I guess we can't be Mookie you Blaylock. Know, so Mookie Blaylock, his lot in life hasn't been so great. He probably would have been better off holding on to letting you guys uh, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And, but, and I remember distinctly that we all got Pearl Jam and we got the name Pearl Jam and it was just like a collective yawn. And we were just like, it's nobody loved it. It was kind of like whatever it is. And it's turned out to be fine, but it's, it goes to show that sometimes you can have a name that's not that great. You just got to kind of do something and then it kind of, it gets better. Well, it's funny. My name is Marty. Her name is Danielle on the air together. 
those sound like your parents, a uh, swinger couple, they go, yeah, Bahamas, on <laughs> right? But it's it's been up to us to make us, the yeah, and Danielle. And I have to say, well, you, you, you're not wrong, Pearl Jam sounds like something you get at a farmer's market, yeah, but yeah. And, and 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 I, I say it with complete respect, you yeah. tattooed that on our hearts and brain stone, yeah. We well, really it's, it's worked out clearly, yeah. it's worked out for me, yeah, There's no question about it. No doubt. Danielle, Danielle has the big question here at the end that we end with. Okay. Yes. One last question for you, Stone, before we uh, leave you. You have been to San Diego, played many, many shows here over your career. What is your best San Diego memory? Man. Um, you know, uh, you know, stay, what's the, we always, stay, we, I can't tell you what hotel we stay at. That's terrible. People will be there. They'll be bugging me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a nice hotel on the beach i uh, you know that uh, swimming at the hotel dell before um at um going there and having beers with some old friends a long time ago and then going swimming at night and it was absolutely the best probably completely dangerous and almost <laughs> probably died but um that was my my dear friend Huli, um and uh i had a, I had a great time <laughs> if the sharks don't get you the sewage will over there that's yeah no, <laughs> this 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 was twenty years ago. So uh, hopefully, I, I don't I I didn't even know about that. So I, I don't know. <laughs> Stone Gossard, so uh, honored we are to have uh, this moment with you. We look forward to that rescheduled Kabo show on the beach with Ed and all the guys. So yeah, we're fingers crossed that's going to yeah. go. And of course, we're very excited about your new album with Mason Jennings. Brittany oh, great. Cameron. It is out and available now. Painted Shield is where you can find Stone's latest music. Stone, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, thanks so much for playing the band and uh, keeping track of us. And uh, it was nice. You guys had good questions. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stone. Hope to uh, see you in 2021. Yeah, me too. All right, I gotta you guys. Get some dog poop. All right. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs>